26 states have laws pending that would require anybody who wants to participate in a presidential election to have released 10 years of tax returns. Should this be a federal law? We're discussing it with Julio Rivera. Fascinating debate. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, and subscribe. Condé Nast, uh, the publisher of Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair is reporting right now that the Trump Organization, uh, which Donald Trump is the head of, of course, is a little tiny company in New York State out of, you know, I think they have 13 employees. Uh, the Trump Organization uh, participated in a scheme to launder money through the Iranian National Guard or the, the uh, uh, Re Revolutionary Guard, um, the IRGC, to acquire weapons of mass destruction for Iran while Donald Trump was running for president. Uh, they've got uh, multiple sources on this. According to reporter David uh, Adam Davidson in 2012, this is when it began. Trump Organization signed multiple contracts uh, the, the, with this guy, uh, Zia Mamadov, uh, who was, quote, notoriously corrupt even for Azerbaijan. Uh, the family then, you know, they were, they were building this property and, and literally laundering money for the Iranian uh, the Iranian military that uh, this week Trump declared a terrorist organization. Shouldn't we have the right to see his tax returns and find out how much money he helped the Iranian guard launder, how much money he was, how much, how much business he was doing in Azerbaijan, uh, in Baku with this Trump Tower that was never completed but was built and then caught on fire, uh, how much insurance money he got. Shouldn't we find out how much of the Russian oligarch's money has ended up in his pockets after both of his sons came out and said, we don't need American banks, we're getting all our money from Russia? Don't we as the American people have the right to know this? Uh, it seems to me like, you know, a reasonable thing. On the line with us is Julio Rivera, the editorial director of Reactionary Times, columnist with Newsmax, the American thinker in townhall.com. Reactionarytimes.com is his website. Oh, yeah, it's Julio is his Twitter handle. Julio, welcome back to the program. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Tom. And with my apologies, I was not completely aware of this development in Vanity Fair. I, I was uh, under the impression we were going to just talk to general, should tax returns be, um, you know, well, this, this should be my apology then, Julio, because I was not aware of this until about an hour ago, and I, and I should have let you know that this is something that I would like to talk to you about. But this is, this is just an example. I mean, we know that there are dozens of examples of the Trump Organization doing business with corrupt oligarchs all around the world, and with, in some cases, oligarchs who are associated with the governments. Uh, in, in, he's got a Trump Tower in Manila, and we've got a, a murderous uh, quasi-dictator now running, running the Philippines. With, um, Tom, there's nothing wrong with him doing business as a multinational corporatist. I mean, there's, he's not the only person, newsflash, that's doing this. Now, if there's specific evidence and if these sources are reputable and you have enough information to possibly subpoena the tax returns based on if they were engaged in illegal activities, then yes, under those circumstances, most definitely that would be something that we need to look at. I think the general question of him releasing his tax return is boiled down to the fact that he's so unpopular and people are going after, you know, uh, companies that sponsor conservative causes. You know, um, advertisers are always threatening to pull out of Fox News for one thing or another, that Trump kind of wants to protect people he's done business with in general to not have their names disclosed should, you know, tax returns be released because of unfair, you know, treatment by the media. That, That's you know, the weakest excuse I've ever heard. First of all, you're, you can release your tax returns in a way that, that doesn't, uh, you know, implicate <laughs> innocent parties, as it were. And, and sec you know, I mean, just like, uh, you know, I, frankly, well, here's my question for you, Julio. Are you asserting, I think that what he's trying to hide, I think what he's trying to cover up is the fact that he's not actually a billionaire, that he's been in debt, deeply in debt, ever since his last bankruptcies in the late 90s, and that he has never climbed out of that hole of debt, and that everything, you know, I mean, he's got literally billions of dollars in loans. He's never filed personal bankruptcy. And if you have, he's been involved in over 100 businesses and he's had four bankruptcies. I mean, if you look at the rate 
of businesses that go bankrupt in this country. It's over 80 percent of new businesses go bankrupt in the first two years. So I, that's, mean, I think that's uh, Julio, it's not true. More than 80 percent of businesses cease to operate in the first two years. And that's because uh, the vast majority of businesses are things that people start, you know, hey, I've got an idea. I think I'm going to start a business for 200 bucks. I can incorporate. And then six months down the road, nothing happens and they and they kill it off or they just stop filing tax returns. Um, no, you can compare it's got nothing to, to do with bankruptcy. Yeah, but listen, in a lot of these businesses he was a part of, and it wasn't necessarily de facto running it. He may have licensed these are businesses. He might have licensed his name and his trademarks and his brand name to things like steaks and, 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 and wine. So and if, a, if a real billionaire like Tom Steyer was running for president on the Democratic side, and you had some, you know, fairly compelling evidence, like, you know, members of his family telling the news media that Tom Steyer had been doing business with uh, you know, countries that you don't like, let's say Hugo Chavez in, in Venezuela and Fidel Castro in Cuba, wouldn't you be asking for, for Tom Steyer's tax returns? No, you're asking a general broad question based on no real evidence. Yeah, has he done business with Venezuela? Has he done business? With, no, uh, to the best of my knowledge, he has not. He but, has. but if he has, I mean, I think it's a reasonable question because I'm just asking you if the, if the shoe okay. were on the other foot, the would you still be holding to this position? I said it at the very beginning. Like I, didn't, I wasn't aware of this money laundering accusation. And if there's any validity to it, I have no problem whatsoever with the tax returns that are pertinent for those years being released, so we can see actually whether or not they. Because that's a big accusation. You say money laundering. People go to jail for that, Tom. So you can't throw around loose accusations like that unless the sources and the, the actual stories are co You know, you can corroborate it with other information. Julio, Trump, Trump, buy, Trump has a, uh, uh, a, uh, a condo property that, that he, he buys from, a, that, that, that's worth around, as I recall, $12 million. And this Russian oligarch gives him, what, $54 million? Am I remembering this right? I mean, this has been, you know, a while since this was reported. Um, if, if it, it was over $50 million for the thing. And and it's like, how is that not money laundering? I mean, there's there's there are numerous examples of Trump they, selling they properties at wildly inflated prices to to uh, to oligarchs of corrupt foreign, you know, associated with corrupt foreign governments. Doesn't that alarm you? Well, listen, if those if that if that company wanted to purchase that property for that price. More credit for Trump for getting that much for it. They, they, unless you show me evidence that as a result of that deal, Donald Trump did something for them, that there was a sort of pay-to-play element to it, then you're just speculating at that point. That evidence there would be something. in his tax returns, Julio. Well, the tax returns aren't necessarily going to show anything. What would the tax returns show other than the fact that he, he made it a lot more It would show the transaction. For that property. It would show the transaction, that, that, that dirty money came in and it got made clean Trump, by being put in Donald Trump's, Trump's bank account. Does that, listen, you like to frame everybody as a bankster that's a capitalist and, and successful at it. How is that money? This guy's not money? a capitalist. He's a grifter. Oh, he's not a grifter. I mean, listen, he's been very successful. He's probably he's done the things that he has at his disposal to do to stay on top of all the, all the transactions that he involves himself in. No, he he's an incompetent money. grifter. If he had taken the four hundred and thirty million dollars that he got from his daddy, which he lied to you about, by the way, he told you it was only a million. If he had taken the four hundred and thirty million dollars that he got from his daddy and and simply put it in in an index fund that tracked the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, right now he'd be worth about twelve billion dollars. All the evidence that I've seen indicates that he's probably about a billion dollars in the hole. He's incompetent. He, he, he was found guilty. He pled guilty to fraud, for God's sake, Julio. You're using information that isn't completely verified. We're not seeing his tax returns, so we don't know. People have been speculating that he's been devaluing his property uh, on his actual tax returns and then overstating the value of the property. Well, we know that. I mean, just, just, just the records that were released by a county in New York, in New York State, show that he took, he took a property that was worth 10 or $15 million, declared that it was worth hundreds of millions of dollars in his statements to Deutsche Bank. Listen, you, you can't, you're not, we're not seeing the tax return, so we don't know. It. These aren't, no, no, you don't need a tax return to know that this is the truth. This is, this is, you know, you look, you can see the documents of what he said to Deutsche Bank, and you can see the documents documents of what he said to the county, I forget which county, I think Westchester County in New York, where yeah, he, you know. Westchester County ultimately decides what the tax rate is and what the tax assessment is. It's not like Donald Trump is, is uh, He buys a property for around seven or eight million dollars. 
it's worth, you know, this is like a decade or two ago. It's worth 10 or 15 million now. He claims to Deutsche Bank as he's trying to get a loan for hundreds of millions of dollars that the property is worth hundreds of millions of dollars and he's going to use it to secure the loan. Then after he gets the loan, he goes back to Westchester County and says the property's not even worth 15 million dollars. It's only worth eight or 10. Come on, Julio. This is, this is a, this is a grifter. We've got a criminal in the White House. The potential that you can sell individual units for and on all of that comes into play when you're trying to determine the intrinsic value of a property. This is so one of his market. estates. This is one of his mansions. It's not, he's not selling anything. Whatever it is, because this is, they're saying that this is widespread throughout all of his property holdings. So they, listen. So I don't you want to know? If you want to have, listen, general tax returns, in, in requesting the general tax returns of people who have proven to not do anything wrong, I think is an unfair invasion of privacy for people subsequent to Trump who may run for president. That I will that I will say. But in terms of the original thing that you brought me on here and then you said that, um, you know, that, that he may be involved in some type of money laundering situation, if in fact he is, then yes, I would believe that. That's okay, so we've got, Julio, we just have a minute and a half left. We've got 20, I, I believe it's 23 or 26 states now that have proposed legislation before their legislatures requiring a candidate for president of the United States to, in order to be on the ballot in those states to have disclosed 10 years of tax returns. Do you, dis, do you disapprove of that or is that okay with you? That's up to the individual citizens of those states. If they decide that that's what they want, that's our system and it becomes law and it should be honored. I personally don't necessarily feel it should be, but I wouldn't vote for that resolution. But if the people do, then sure. Hmm. Interesting. So at a federal level, then we should have this as well, right? Or no? Only if, if legislation passes through both chambers and is signed into law by the president. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen with the Republicans in control of the Senate when you've got, you know, this kind of this level of hey, corruption. I'm, I'm pretty sure that if Hillary Clinton would have won, she wouldn't have wanted all those tax returns and all the Clinton Foundation money and all the Haiti relief. Oh, she'd been putting out. She had been putting out her. First of all, all the Clinton Foundation stuff is is completely transparent. It's a nonprofit. They have to report that stuff. And secondly, she's been yeah, reporting her tax returns every year since 1990, 1991.